Hello, this is Piano Q&A with Nancy Allred, and uh, today I'm going to address a question that I'm asked um, here and there and have been asked many, many times throughout my life as a college professor and um, community member and professional. So the, the question is this, um, how do I get back in shape with my piano skills after I've had a break? And there can be many, many reasons one takes a break. Um, so I would like to outline what I've done through a few different periods in my life when, because of life circumstances, I had to have a break and what I did to get back in shape. Um, first of all, I did my um, bachelor's and master's at uh, Brigham Young University, and I studied with Paul Poli and Robert Smith as a uh, piano major. They um, it was a wonderful, just fabulous experience. In the middle of those college years, I left uh, school and to serve a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I served in Venezuela. So, and part of the time in Houston, I was gone for 18 months and the few months before were pretty intense getting ready to be a missionary and then coming home. I actually had six months before I went back to school because I returned home in February and I was working full time. So I was trying to practice, but it wasn't the consistent practice that I would have eventually when I returned to school. So then I returned back to school and I remember the amazing frustration I had <laughs> because I felt um, mentally and spiritually um, capable of doing so much more as a pianist and yet physically my, my technique, if you will, was definitely <laughs> lacking because of close to two years of uh, time off. So, um, as I mentioned in an earlier video with Dr. Pol, I did a lot of hand in and I dove into that. I was very careful. Um, I believe in not going too fast too soon. So I just built up my hand in exercises one through 31. I built those back up and got the easy, comfortable tempo and then just started moving them up. And uh, I did a good half hour a day of Hannon and, and, and then began at adding all the scales and arpeggios and chords and everything that we do. And so at some point I did one full hour of technique every day. And I was very consistent at that. And then began learning pieces and reviewed some. I remember my first performance uh, in a master class with Leonard Panario. The full, that fall semester that I was back and I was shaking in my boots, but two years off and you feel so out of balance. That's probably the best word I can say. And so I remember my nerves were there. I performed well, learned a lot, but I realized that I had a long way to go and that even though I was building my technique back up and I was learning the repertoire, and reviewing old repertoire, um, I had a long way to go with performing. And so I consistently did a minimum of four hours a day of practice. So one hour again was um, devoted to the technical skills. I remember it was almost six months to the day when I returned back to um, BYU that I finally began feeling like, okay, uh, this is coming back. I feel like I am technically strong again and coming back to that wonderful place that I had been in before being a missionary. And um, then something miraculous happened is once the technique, I felt like it was back, it, it was like I jumped up five notches on the ladder of my progression as a pianist because then the technique connected those dots to my mental and spiritual and emotional um, experiences that I would had during those couple of years. And it was like, then I could move forward where, where in that six months, I was almost in this holding pattern. 
So I learned a lot from that in my teaching of piano majors. Anytime anyone comes back from a mission, we talk a lot about doing the technique and getting the skills and being patient and, um, and, and it really does pay off. So that, that was my first real experience of having a break. A couple of years later, when I was preparing for my senior recital, um, I had gone through some difficult back issues. And I think it's easy for pianists or any musicians. We spend a lot of hours a day sitting. And uh, here I'm trying, to, <laughs> I'm trying to sit up straight just now. Um, and I had some major issues and I'd been seeing doctors and therapists, uh, physical therapists, and they, they couldn't really find anything wrong. It just was treating me with physical therapy. And the one doctor said, you just need to take a rest. So I finally decided to take a week or two off of practicing, took a rest. And then I, I, um, did a lot of thought and pondering and praying and, decided I was just I would just have to work myself back up to that four hours a day little by little and it was hard there I had a lot of tears I was really frustrated but I once I had a little bit of a break I said okay I'm gonna do five minutes I knew I could do five minutes I could do five minutes so I practiced for five minutes and um, did that for two or three days and then I moved it up to ten minutes did that for a few days. I, I am pretty sure I did at least three days in a row of a very sh short chunk of time. Then I, after a few days, did 15 minutes and then 20 minutes and so on and so forth until I built myself up to a half hour and then eventually up to an hour. And this was slow. This, this was only a few months before the senior recital. So I, I know over a a 30 day period or more it took me to build myself back up to practicing uh to the four hours a day and then once i once i got to one or two hours a day it got a little bit easier to add more time and that's what i did the time in the early weeks of that when i wasn't practicing very much i was studying my music a lot spent a lot of time with the music and in the library this was the days before the internet so we would travel over to the library and do listening and studying of scores and, and that I did a lot of mental practice during that time. So that was my second um, experience having a break. It wasn't an extended break, but it was a, a time when I had a, a huge uh, challenge in front of me with the back issue and I had to work myself back up to doing um, consistent practicing again. The third experience I had was uh, my last year at BYU and I was soloing with the BYU Philharmonic playing the Chopin first concerto first movement and uh, it's a that's a war horse as we know and uh, I had a bout with tendonitis dealing with that and um, physical problems have plagued me a little bit here and there um, and I had to kind of the same thing with the back issues after that performance, um, and which went very well, but I had to take, a, I probably took two weeks off, maybe three, and then did the same thing where working back up, um, and building myself back up just a few minutes each day, uh, five minutes and then in a few days, 10 and so on and so forth. And I built myself back up, but I still felt plagued with a little bit of tendonitis. Um, it was at that point when I moved to Kansas City and um, started my DMA, my doctorate in piano performance and began studying with Joanne Baker. And, and our my first several weeks of lessons we worked quite a bit on my physical approach and uh, I had just a very subtle bit of tension in my wrist and we worked extended amounts of time on that and um, were able to solve that and it's been a huge blessing right now because I, I learned a lot. It, I wasn't overly tense. It wasn't, it didn't look tense 
but we did find some tension in my wrist and I was able to learn how to be much more flexible. And so I, because this was kind of the third episode, if you will, when I had to take a break, I did the same thing, starting very minimal amounts of time and then building that back up. The next time I had a break was um, t uh, at the end of my uh, doctoral uh, courses and all my four recitals and I had been married um, just over a year and I, I uh, found out I was expecting my first baby. And um, when he was born, that was a huge uh, change for me and my, my son Spencer. Uh, born in 1992 and um, my whole life changed and all of a sudden I was navigating working on my dissertation I was trying to be a wife uh, mother to my beautiful little boy and teaching 35 students and I was overwhelmed to the max and so my practicing was the one thing I, I just could not keep up so I played all during my the lessons that I gave, but as far as my own practicing, that didn't um, happen. I eventually had four children all during the time I was having my, my babies. And so the practicing was almost nothing. I would practice something to play or accompany someone at church, and that was sort of the extent. Um, so fast forward, um, about in the year 1999, I believe, I was asked to um, collaborate with Ryan, Ryan Selberg of the Utah Symphony um, and Tracy Price, who headed up the, the Black Glove Cello Festival, and they asked me to collaborate with him. And, and so I got to do some amazing um, cello works for cello and piano, and that was a great experience, and I had to practice. And so my youngest baby was, Preston was, uh, one at that time or not, I'm not quite one. So it was a juggling act. My parents helped me a lot at this point. I was divorced. And so I, I, my, my plate was full as we all have a full plate. And so I was able to practice and, and it was joyful to get back into chamber music again, because I've always loved collaborating. Um, that was a great experience. And I did that cello festival every summer for several several summers and then in the in the next year I was asked to be the accompanist for the Southwest Southwest Symphonic Chorale and um, collaborated with Dr. J. Kim and that was a great experience and uh, he gave me some pretty <laughs> difficult accompaniments and so there I was again having to um, practice and be ready and, and it was joy joyous to be in rehearsal again um, just that little bit of time every week that I could start to share music. So I did that and then eventually became part of the Heritage Choir and did some uh, directing and conduct conducting in the Heritage Choir and, uh, and that and their concert schedule was pretty intense. So I was practicing a lot. It was not my normal solo repertoire but at least I was moving my fingers and I was practicing and um, my children loved hearing music in the home. That was, uh, obviously I was teaching at home my students, but they loved hearing that. And uh, so then at some point during those years, I got really brave and I thought I've got to start practicing solo and I've got to start, um, I've got to get my technique back. And in, in those years of, playing for choirs and chamber, I still didn't do much of the technical skills. And so uh, I, just, I did a couple of recitals in the St. George Tabernacle, and then at some point I was asked to perform um, the Schumann Piano Concerto with the Southwest Symphony, which is our wonderful community orchestra and, and Gary Caldwell. And in bringing that concerto back, I put myself on a, a another technical schedule, if you will. And I probably did up to about half hour of technique a day for a lot of months and was just building my strength. Again, as I've said, I do a lot of Hammond and then scales and arpeggios and chords. And uh, 
So I, at that point, I probably built myself back up to two hours a day. And then there were some days I was able to do three and four. Um, I wasn't teaching full time yet at Dixie. And uh, that was a great experience. And that uh, performing that concerto was probably the last time I had to build my technique back up. Um, well, we all have breaks for whatever reason. Um, but that, that was sort of the, you know, I, I kind of moved up another notch on the ladder because of that I was able to do my um, technical, build my strength and get things in line. I don't right now as, as a full-time professor and um, associate dean in the arts, I, I don't have four hours a day to practice. And I, I hope to get an hour either at the end of the day or very often during my lunch hour. So I don't have um, a lot of time, but I have kept my performing up probably for the last 15 years. And that's helped a whole lot in maintaining my strength and consistency. Thank you.